Okay, and welcome back folks. Professor Almeida here with a walkthrough on Packet Tracer 471 in COSN 10. Now I wanted to put this video together because at first things may seem a little daunting in trying to work with physical equipment in a simulator, but once you get past those first few steps, the rest should fall into place and it's just a matter of providing the correct physical connections. So let's just get right on into it and if you need that pause button, it's there waiting for you. Okay. So you can see that I've pretty much prepped everything in place here. You can see I have my Word document open. You're going to put your name, Packet Tracer 471, and you're going to provide a screenshot showing your completion rate. Now, if you're in doubt, right, you can always go to the actual assignment. Here's Packet Tracer 471, and you can see that I'm not asking for any additional screenshots, just the completion rate. You'll also notice that I have the curriculum open here, and this is where you can grab the packet tracer file for 471. You can also get the instructions, but it's already provided to you. Okay. Additionally, if you need to get packet tracer on your own system, you can always come on up to course introduction, student resources, and then you can get your packet tracer. Also, if you have any questions, on how to submit packet tracer activities. I provided this here back in module one and you can see the example that I provided. So let me show you real quick, okay? If you already know how to do this, just bear with me for a moment here. Here's an example, okay? Again, you can see this right here. Okay, let's go ahead and open up our packet tracer file. Let me uh, move back to 443 real quick. This is gonna come in handy later when we uh, talk about working with the different types of copper cabling, okay? So I'm gonna leave that aside for a moment. Let's open up 471. Okay, if you're doing this from a classroom or a computer lab, you will need to log into your Cisco account. But if you're at home, you really only need to log into it once and it shouldn't really ask you again. Once you've done that, come on down to the taskbar where you see your user profile go ahead and put your name in, click OK, and then click Yes to reset the activity. Okay, so at first glance, it may seem there's quite a bit going on here with all of this equipment. But again, once you get past the first few steps, it really isn't that bad. So let me expand this uh, pop-up window out a little bit, okay, so you can see the instructions here. Now, first, in part one, step one, they want you to identify the management ports of a Cisco router. Now, in AA201B, we do have a couple of Cisco routers, but I doubt that the IT folks will let you just mess around with them. So that's what we have the simulator here for. But I know it can seem a little intimidating at first, but trust me on this, once you get the hang of it, it really isn't that bad, okay? So let's take a look at the East router here. I'm gonna click on the East router. And this is the little simulator uh, showing you how you can access the management ports here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this real quick. So this is a Cisco 1940 series router here. And you can see the number of different modules available to you. And these modules give the router additional capabilities here. But we need to pay attention to the scenario that they're giving us, okay? Because you're going to notice we have these three PCs over here. But before I do that, they want you to go into the command line interface here and run show IP interface brief, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do show IP interface brief. And this is really just to convince you um, what kind of interfaces you have, especially after you install the correct modules. So you'll see that we have two gigabit ethernet interfaces, two serial interfaces, and then we have a VLAN interface, okay? So this is kind of like the before in the before and after, okay? So let me put this aside for a moment and bring back the instructions. Now, again, you can rearrange these windows uh, as needed here, okay? So you'll see in step one, they do have you run show IP interface brief, and then you can enter the different commands, okay? Some, some steps have questions for you, and they ask you to do a couple of other things, uh, especially when we get to verifying whether things work. Um, I'm just trying to show you how to get to 100% here, okay? So in part two, step one, this is the scenario they're giving you here with this router. You need to connect PCs one, two, and three to the east router, but you do not have the necessary funds 
to purchase a new switch. Okay, right away they're giving you a hint here. Okay, we need some kind of switching capability so that we can connect the three PCs to the router. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We have to look through the different modules to see which one is going to give us switching capabilities. Okay, you might have already seen the correct answer here. So if you've chosen this one here for ESW, right? This is the correct answer, okay? This gives you four switching ports. So let's go ahead and install this. But as you will see, okay, as you will see, you cannot just add the modules, right? They're not hot swappable. So we have to actually power down the router here. And in the simulator, we just click on the power switch, right? This turns off the router. Now to quote unquote install these switching ports, we just grab this module and we drag it into place and then we power the router back on, okay? And now to convince you that we have the correct interfaces, we're gonna go back into the command line interface. You can see the iOS is starting up and we're gonna go ahead and issue show IP interface brief again. Okay, now you'll see we have four fast ethernet interfaces here corresponding to the four switching ports. Okay, so the module is there in place and we are done with the East router for the moment. Now we need to look at switch two. Okay, let's take a look at switch two here. And again, we can see the number of different modules available to us and in the command line interface, we can go ahead and run show IP interface brief and we see what's there, okay. Uh, we have a couple of fast Ethernet interfaces. We do have a gigabit Ethernet interface and a VLAN interface, okay? Now, in this scenario, right, in this scenario, they want us to find a module we can insert to provide a gigabit optical connection to switch three, okay? So there's your hint. We're going to have an optical connection between switch two and switch three. So we have to look through the modules again and figure out which one is going to give us a gigabit optical connection, okay? Let's look at this one. Oh, hey, this is gigabit ethernet, but it's copper connectivity. Nope, that's not it, right? How about this one, gigabit ethernet? Oh, hey, look at this, optical connectivity. All right, this is the one we want, but just like with the router, we have to power down the switch first, okay? So we power down the switch, and then we install the module into place, quote unquote install. And then let's turn the switch back on. And then to convince ourselves, okay, we go back into the command line. We're gonna run show IP interface brief again. So I hope that this makes some sense, okay? It's just a matter of getting past these two steps here and then everything else is just gonna fall into place, okay? So if you need that pause button, it's there waiting for you. All right, let's go ahead and convince ourselves. Show IP interface brief. Okay, and now you'll see that we have a new gigabit ethernet interface here, okay, 5.1. This is gonna come in handy a little bit later. All right, so now let's come on down to connect devices and they have this table for us here. Let me expand this a little bit. They have this table for us. So this pretty much takes the guesswork out of everything, right? Because they tell us, oh, we have to connect the appropriate cable. But again, if you look at the table, it tells you right away which cable we're using as well as which interfaces to use for each end device, okay? So let's go through the first one together and hopefully you'll figure out what we're doing here. Okay. Again, if you need that pause button, it's there waiting for you. All right, let's start with the East router here. So we're going to use a copper straight through cable to connect the East router to switch one. And on the East router, we have gigabit Ethernet 00, and then switch one, it's gigabit Ethernet 01. So you may find yourself having to do this quite a bit, right? You're going to have to come back, bring the table up, and, uh, and then use the appropriate uh, cable connection. So let's go ahead, click on this lightning bolt for connections. We have our copper straight through. 
Let's start with the East router. And again, if you're not sure, before you commit, right, you can always bring that table back. All right, here we go. Gigabit Ethernet 00 interface on the ETH, on the uh, East router to Gigabit Ethernet 01 on switch one, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And you should see it light up. Now, let's say we use the wrong cable. We can always delete it. So I can click on delete and then just get rid of the cable that's perfectly fine and then we can try again okay so you can do that too if you make a mistake all right so we should see it light up and let's go ahead and check our completion rates okay so far so good right let's continue east router to switch four okay both of them are gigabit ethernet 01 again copper straight through okay so gigabit ethernet 01 gigabit ethernet 01 okay again these should turn green. It might take a moment or two. Okay, so be patient with that. But watch your completion rate. Okay, right now we're at 15%. Now we need to connect. We need to connect PC1, PC2, and PC3 to the East router. Notice that for all the PCs, they all use fast Ethernet 0. Okay, and then with the router, it's fast Ethernet 010, 011, and 012, respectively. Okay, so copper straight through for all of these. Okay, so fast Ethernet 010 that goes to PC1. Okay, and then fast Ethernet 011 to PC2. Okay, and then one more fast Ethernet 012 to PC3. Okay, so at this point, you really don't need me anymore, right? It's just a matter of following the table. But if you wanna see this all the way to the end, keep watching. If you know what you're doing at this point, you can pretty much stop this video. I don't mind, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and keep going. If you need that pause button, it's there waiting for you. Okay, so you can see everything's lit up at this point. Uh, these are all lighting up. Let's go ahead and uh, go down the table here. So at this point, we're done with the East Router for now. Let's look at switch one. Okay, switch one, and I need to scroll down a little bit. You'll see that we have PC4, 5, and 6. Okay, we have PC4, 5, and 6. Again, with the PCs, they all use fast Ethernet 0 uh, on their NICs. Okay, we're using copper straight through. So respectively, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3 for 4, 5, and 6 here. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? Switch one, fast Ethernet 01 to PC4. Okay, again, each PC is fast Ethernet 0, right? 02 to PC5, and then 03, fast Ethernet 03 to PC6. Okay, so we're done with switch one at this point. We're at 62% completion. Now, we're gonna connect switch four to switch three, and we're using a crossover cable, okay? Now, let me bring the curriculum back real quick here. So on 443, we talk about straight through versus crossover UTP cabling, okay? Uh, unshielded twisted pair. So when do we use straight through versus crossover? Straight through cables are the most common type, and it's used to interconnect host to switch and switch to a router. That's what it's commonly used for. But we use crossover cables to interconnect similar devices. So for example, switch to switch, which is what we're doing here, host to host or router to router. Okay, you can see that we're going from switch to switch. So we're gonna use a crossover cable for this. Okay, so on switch four, it's gigabit ethernet 02, and then on switch three, it's gigabit ethernet 31. Okay, so we're gonna take this crossover cable here, on switch four, okay, so again, you get stuck, come on back to the table, right? So switch four, it's uh, zero two, and then switch three, it's three one. So gigabit ethernet zero two, and then gigabit ethernet three one. All right, so that part is done. Okay, we're at 68% here. Now, switch three to switch two, okay? Remember, we installed that module there on switch two, Okay, that gives us an optical connection to switch three. So it's optical, which means we're gonna use fiber cabling. Okay, switch three is five one, and likewise with switch two. So we're gonna take that fiber cabling and you can connect 
using this right here. See, this should give you a hint too. This is a fiber connection, right? So connect to switch two. There you go. Again, these lights will turn green and you can see our completion rate is now at 76%. All right, let's connect PC789 to uh, switch two, and respectively, it's gonna be fast ethernet 01, 11, and 21. Okay, so it's gonna, so it's gonna, gonna use uh, 01, 11, and 21 here. All of them straight through cabling, okay? So fast ethernet 01 to PC7, right? And then 11 to PC8. And then two one to PC nine. Okay. So at this point, if you really wanted to, you could stop here and take your screenshot. But let's just keep on going. Okay. So switch to gigabit three one to access point port uh, zero. We're going to use copper straight through again. So let me uh, move down a little bit here. Okay, so let's go with uh, Gigabit Ethernet 3.1. Okay, let me just verify real quick here. Gigabit 3.1. Okay, Gigabit 3.1 to port 0. Boom, that is done. All right, we're at 96%. And let's go ahead and finish this, right? Let's connect the east and west routers together over the serial interface, and we're using serial DCE. So here's serial DCE, and they do tell you to connect to east first, right? So connect east to west, and that should do it, folks. All right, 100% completion. I know they have all the rest of this for you to do, but at this point, we're pretty much done with the activity, right? So let's go ahead and uh, screenshot this. So I have my Snip and Sketch app. Let's go ahead and launch that. Click New, and we're going to choose Windows Snip. And then I'm gonna click on my instructions here. Okay, there you go. And then let's go ahead and copy this and paste it into the Word document. Now, if this doesn't work for whatever reason, okay, because I know on campus um, I've had problems with this, what you could also do is go back into Snip and Sketch, save this screenshot, right? You could save the screenshot and then in Microsoft Word, go to the Insert tab, Illustrations group, click on Pictures, and then Insert Picture from the device, and then go to the go to the screenshot file, and then uh, paste it into place. Okay. So at this point, we can save our Word doc, and then we're going to turn this in to the 471 assignment. Okay. You can go down to 471, and then click Submit Assignment. So that is Packet Tracer 471, folks. I know it seemed like a lot at the very beginning, but again, once you get past those first two steps, the rest just fall into place. Anyway, thanks for watching. Good luck on this activity, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.